Hello, it's Kelly Van Washinova with Educational Technology Services at Denison. In this EdTech tip, I'm going to go over one of Zoom's newest features, the self-selecting breakout rooms. I'll show you the host perspective so you know how to set those up, and then I'll also show you what it looks like for someone participating in the meeting. This is a really great feature for cases where you want students to go ahead and pick their own breakout rooms. Once I show you how to set it up, I'll go ahead and demo a situation where you might want students to be able to do this. So let's get to the EdTech. So before we actually go into our Zoom meeting and look in there, I'm gonna show you how you can actually set up your breakout rooms in advance. So this could save you some time if you already have an activity planned for class, if you just name them before you go in. So first thing to note is I'm at denison.zoom.us. So that's where you're gonna start whenever you're handling scheduling meetings or editing meetings you've already scheduled. So I'll go ahead and sign in to configure my account. Okay, and one thing to note here is you can see that I have a recurring class. It's my W10129 right here, class meetings. So if I want to edit this class to set up the breakout rooms before we start, say I'm prepping for Tuesday the 13th, I can go ahead and hit edit. And it's going to ask you edit this occurrence or all occurrences. Normally you would just edit this occurrence since you're only doing something for that Tuesday, but because of how Zoom is set up, if you want to name your breakout rooms in advance, you do have to choose the option to edit all occurrences. And then once you're in here, scroll down and you can see breakout room pre-assign. You're going to check that box and then choose the option to create rooms. To add a room, you click the little plus. You can rename it. So if you want to call this help room, for example, you could do that. You can add the participants ahead of time, but for today's demo, I'm going to cover self-selecting, so I wouldn't do that. You can add other rooms here. So now I've added two and I click save. I can see in the details of my meeting right there that I have two breakout rooms set up and then I'm just going to click save down there. So once I'm actually in that class meeting in Zoom and I look at my breakout rooms, I can see that they're already ready. And if you change your mind after you're in the class, you can always choose recreate, add more rooms or just delete them if you want. So you might be wondering, Kelly, you went ahead and set up all of my classes to have those same breakout rooms, but you can easily change it. So after Tuesday's class, you could just go back in, click edit again, all occurrences, and then you can just scroll down and edit those breakout rooms. You can also turn them off altogether if you don't want to pre-assign anymore. All right, let's take a look at those self-selecting breakout rooms. All right, so once you're in your class, something that might be useful when you're getting ready to let students self-select into breakout rooms is I'm going to go ahead and show a slide I made. So let's go ahead and share screen. And I have my Google Slides open in my Chrome browser over there, so I will open that up. So the idea is here that I'm just giving them a description of the different breakout rooms that I'm going to pull up for them. And their options are professor, help room, which we'll just keep that as the main room, and they can always come back to the main room if they need help from the professor. I also have an open classwork room where they can leave their mics on to talk to each other. Um, I have the quiet work room where everyone's quiet. I just want them to work quietly until the end of class when I bring everyone back together. And then I also have someone from Educational Technology Services with me, and they will be in the tech help room. Um, maybe if you have a particular assignment that is a digital project, you could invite one of us in and we can help support that. So I've been in classes where this would have been incredibly useful earlier this year, so I hope you find this model useful for you. Even if you're not doing this open work type of a room, or type of a room setup, I should say, you can still put descriptions of those different rooms here so that students know a little more about what they're selecting to go into. Um, you could even put groups listed and have them go into their own groups, whatever works. 
So going back into my Zoom window, now I'm going to actually start the breakout rooms. And I'm going to click the breakout rooms at the bottom. And I will select to create three breakout rooms because the professor help room, that's going to be this main room. And the biggest difference between the other breakout room setup is I'm choosing let participants choose room. And I'm clicking create. I can rename all of my rooms right here. So we will call this one the open class work room. Okay, so I just renamed all of my work rooms or all of my breakout rooms to reflect the rooms I put on the slide there so students know where they're going. And I can assign people or I can just click the open all rooms where they will be opting into their rooms. So there I go, I've opened them. Now, if you do the other option where you actually create the rooms before you come in, which I covered earlier in this video, you can create all those rooms, you can name them ahead of time, and then when you open the breakout rooms area, those rooms will be all set and ready. So I can look at my breakout rooms and see where they are. I could also assign them if they're having trouble. So one of the other reasons would be if someone hasn't done an update yet, let's say um, Cheryl didn't do an update yet, I could click the assign to and I could pick the room for her. Or if, if Dan said, oh, I can't, I can't get in there, I'm having some technical difficulties, I can just click assign to and move them to those rooms. But they are self-opting in there. In the magic of editing, I have placed the host or the professor view on the left here and the participant or the student view on the right. So you can follow to see what those two different views look like. Okay, so now I can see them all in their rooms. Um, I'm going to just put a message. I broadcast a message to them, feel free to move to another room so we can kind of see them shuffle in those self-selected rooms. So now I have multiple people in that quiet workroom, and it just lets them move around a bit depending on what they need for this particular example. And they could even come back to unassigned, which is this main area. When I'm done and I want to regroup everyone at the end of class, I can choose close all rooms. And it will give them that automatic 60 seconds to leave. You can also adjust some of those settings as well if you want. But here everyone is back. If before I sent them to the rooms, I could also do the settings here and change that countdown timer. But once they're in the rooms and then you decide to bring them back, you can't adjust that 60 second countdown timer. Okay, so let me close this out. I can just X here uh, or I could go back in and recreate and reopen them. If I choose recreate, it will wipe those clear and I will have a fresh start. Okay, and then so once everyone's back in the class, you can go ahead and carry on with the rest of your class as usual. Thank you for watching this week's EdTech Tip. As a reminder, please make sure to send any questions you might have about Denison Technology Resources to the ITS Service Desk. They can be reached at servicedesk at denison.edu. Also, here's just a bonus tip for you. Zoom also released the ability to put filters on your camera image. So if you decide to do this, just a reminder, not that it happened to me, but make sure you uncheck the box for it to remember that for the, your next meeting, because you may happen to end up in a situation where you're in a campus-wide meeting and you show up with a beard and lipstick and really big eyebrows. Just saying, again, didn't happen to me, but just a little tip for you. All right, have a great day. Thanks again for watching.